and thank you for choosing Alternatives, OKTV's OK public access volunteer television group that is dedicated to exploring the unique and unconventional subjects that test our ability to think openly and honestly. Our program provides an open forum for talented writers, artists, and musicians, and it's not just limited to the arts. We try to showcase all forms of human expression. That is what public access television is all about. I'm Al Giacomo, your host for Alternatives. Have you ever felt as time was moving faster? Have you ever noticed your intuitive awareness increasing? Is the Earth really approaching another great change as we enter the Aquarian Age? With us again is David Geiger. David is a retired psychotherapist who concentrates on metaphysical healing, shamanism, and the flows of universal energy using stones and crystals. Welcome again to Alternatives, David. Thank you, Al. Uh, I guess our show today will concentrate on, on energy and vibrations 101. Um, why don't you give us a little, a, a, little, um, a little beginning point to energy 101, David? Okay. Uh, let's assume for a moment, if we can suspend belief, that all is composed of energy, sound, light, and all physical matter, material, whatever it may be, is composed of energy. The protons moving around, uh, around neutrons, subatomic particles that are that are creating the building blocks of everything. The faster they're moving, the uh, greater uh, the vibrational rate. We know that anything that is in movement is creating sound. For example, uh, dogs can hear sounds that we cannot uh, on a higher pitch. Um, the point is, is that as we are composed of uh, vibrational rate, uh, everything else is, and that if uh, we are going to make any improvements in our life, it's important that we raise our own personal vibrational rate. Now, the way that we detect this usually is through feel, or through sight, or through sound. Um, So this is almost like the way a tuning fork would, how a person would sense vibrations through a, a tuning fork. Yes. You feel the vibrations. Now, is everyone in, in tune? Obviously, you've brought some subject matter with you today. Yes. Uh, looks like um, a, a quartz wand. Yes. And if anyone off the street was to come on and to, and to grasp that, would, would they feel the wand vibrating? Um, most people... Um, if they're able to suspend belief, are able to feel subtle energies or physical sensations in the body from uh, holding different materials, in this case, different stones. Uh, these are different stones that are from all over the planet. This one happens to be from the backyard here. That's right. That's right. Now, how does... Um how does this pertain to uh, people having psychic episodes? How does that intertwine with, with energy? Okay, um, as we raise our own personal vibration, that means we're, we're basically moving faster. Um, emotionally, lower vibrational feelings, uh, which we tend to avoid, would be like pain, shame, anger, guilt, uh, resentment, cruelty. Uh, these are lower vibrational feelings. If we, if we spend a lot of time having dark or violent thoughts, we tend to lower our own personal vibration. Um, or if we're around people or in situations where we're, we're surrounded by that for any extended period of time, um, we tend to lower our personal vibration. Often, uh, as a result, our body becomes uh, into a place of dis-ease or we become ill. Literally. So a lot of, the, I guess we're, we, we're the cause of our own illnesses that are subliminally ma manifest our, themselves in us? Um, in a sense. In a sense. We create much, um, well, this is a free will planet of sorts. And so through our own choices, we tend to create different, um, different situations. So... Um, Using some of these uh, larger, lar larger stones here, why don't you give us a little bit of a background on 
each of the, the specimens that, you, that you've brought, David, and, and how right. that, that may pertain to uh, raising or, or settling someone's vibrations. Okay. For example, uh, this is a, a Brazilian uh, quartz crystal. Uh, properly, it actually was growing like so. And these uh, grow in, in caves? Uh, in Well, they're not true caves. Off, sometimes they are in caves, but often they're just in crevices. And uh, what that makes this piece unique is uh, that it has uh, some pretty good clarity and that it's uh, uh, very long and large. Uh, for metaphysical or for uh, energetic work, anytime you have the, uh, the, the quartz is a very good transmitter of energy and so it can be used to direct uh, higher frequency energy. Holy Spirit is like a Holy Spirit, prana, life force, uh, chi. These are all other names for uh, the life force energy. It's what keeps everything alive. It's the essence of who we are. Also. The force. It's the, the universal the, force. The force. Okay. So um, we can use and manipulate that in a good way consciously or we can unconsciously use or manipulate some of our own, perhaps, um, you could call it perhaps our shadow side or some of our own edu uneducated parts of ourself or, um, you know, our anger or shame or pain, etc. And if we direct that, we're also doing this, uh, often it's done in a conscious or unconscious level. The point is, is that all of the stones and all, almost all physical matter is vibrating at a higher frequency than we are. Why is that? Um, well, it's perhaps a dis disappointment to all of us and perhaps the entire universe and, and all of them. But in a sense, um, what has happened is that we as a, as a species, as mankind, um, have turned out to be perhaps more man-unkind. We haven't really um, spiritually evolved as quickly as our surroundings here. As the earth. And this is what it said as we as we move into the next age, that this will be very important for human beings in order to make the next, say, thousand years more more pal palatable to each other? Well if we if we continue to dwell in um, in our uh, let's call it our lower self, our lower aspects of ourselves, then we're going to continue to have what we have. And we're not, if we look around there, if we watch the news, if we see what's going on, we struggle with ourselves, we're struggling in our communities, we're struggling globally. And, it, and it's, in a sense, we have to think globally now uh, because we are one. It's time for us to trust each other and become one in a good way. Um, it's time for us to set aside uh, petty national differences, perhaps, on, on some level, um, uh, race of racism, uh, the competition between the brothers and the sisters, all that kind of thing. So basically, it's not going to come from a, a world leadership, um, say from United Nations or from Washington, D.C., on uh, as, as a focal point of leading us to this, that we must find it within ourselves Absolutely. collectively. Absolutely. And by using some of these crystals, we can raise our our personal vi vibrations. We can, yes. The larger crystal you, you you have over there. Tell us a little bit about that and how may that that change uh, someone's energy field. Well, for example, um, this is a Russian quartz point, and uh, it's a little bit smoky in color. Um, it's from the Ural Mountains, in the Soviet Union. Um, it's, it's quite wonderful, has a quite uh, high frequency, and most people can feel that, given uh, a setting where they can just sit down and, and get a chance to do so. Mm -hmm. um, for example, one of your, uh, your camera women could feel the energy of the stones earlier. She, um, <clears throat> the point is, if we can lift our own personal vibration, then for example, what's the difference between you and I and an angel? It, it's only vibrational rate. Um, we're, we're truly, each one of us is wanting to become, we have a longing inside of ourselves to become who we really are, not necessarily who we've been taught to be or who it's appropriate for us to be. We have this great longing, kind of like a salmon uh, 
that has gone out to sea to return to original source, to get closer with ourselves, get closer with our spirit, with our hearts. Um, as long as we're leading with our minds necessarily and not leading with our hearts, we, we really don't have that connection where we can um, begin to become who we really are. So we can have cooperation, so we can build community. Now you've brought along some, um, some aura photographs with you today. Yeah. And um, maybe you can uh, shed a little light, so to speak, on, on what's, uh, what was going on with these aura photographs uh, with, with yourself in these, in these pictures. I'm sure that we could uh, probably get a little bit of a close-up on there, but explain a little bit of, of what you were doing when these photographs were, were taken. Okay. Um, Alan, this one, uh, this is my normal um, aura. An aura is a magnetic field around the body. Um, we're, we're primarily biochemical in nature as far as our physiology. Um, as we have different emotions, uh, think about different things, our aura is in constant flux or change. Um, if you take a, a wire and you have, if an electrician comes to your home and he's checking to see if you have a bad circuit or not, he, he's, they don't check every wire to see if everything's okay. They measure the magnetic field around it. They know that there is life or let's say electricity going through that wire by measuring the magnetic field around it. This is basically, I have my uh, right hand is on a, uh, a sensor plate that's, that's okay. sensing up to nine different uh, things, galvanic skin response and this and that and whatever. And in my left hand I'm not holding anything. Um, and so this is just showing a basic aura. Everybody has an aura. Now, now the different colors, we have a, a, a magenta up on top with some very, very light blue right above your head and a very beige or um, orange on the, on the bottom. What do the colors re re represent? Because colors have vibration and yes. how does this all come together to make David David? Well, so this just happened to be, this was done in Tucson, Arizona about two years ago and this is just like one moment, one particular moment in time. Um, I kind of stepped into my own personal safe space when I did the photograph because I, I made a prayer. Actually, I, I do psychic readings, etc. I got some information that said, go get chummy with the aura lady and see what happens with this in relationship with using stones. And so uh, the yellow is more of a, at the bottom is, <clears throat> is more about uh, being in a place of being open and receptive, uh, open for learning. The, uh, the blue is uh, a bit of calmness and uh, a little peacefulness, receptivity. Uh, the pink is, is just being open um, and having a little bit of a, as we say, an open crown chakra, uh, open for a new experience and, and, and just a touch of love. So I was, in that moment anyway, was uh, pretty comfortable. With I that understand surrounding. that when there's a lot of white and a lot of light colors, it's showing a lot of love. Um, usually, but it it's also depends on the, on the person and, and we all, we're all a little different, so. May I? Shall we go to the Please. next one? All right. Okay. Well, what do we have here? Boy, this, this really changed color here. Yes. Now, I was holding, these are, I don't know if they can pick this up well. These are very tiny little stones, <clears throat> and it's called phenakite, and it's, they're not much bigger than a grain of salt or, you know, slightly. Isn't phenakite the crystal that has the most power or vibration well, to, it to, has to the a stone? It has the highest vibrational uh, rate of any stone on the planet. Now what we can see is that uh, if you wanted to contrast what we saw previous to this one, you can see that the, in the upper portion here that my energy center or crown chakra was, uh, was much, much, much more open. There's much more love and understanding and compassion and um, phenakite is how it is pretty much the stone that was very instrumental in my becoming of uh, being able to work with my innate psychic abilities. It provided the map. Did that more or less just come to you? Does one just feel it is time and that it is time to do this or did you just wake up one day and say I'd like to study these things? Um, well my story is more that I, I, I was a pretty much 8 to 5 guy, the three piece seat, suit kind of fellow. Um, I was involved in a, uh, a major automobile accident. I had 10 uh, 
months basically lying on my back looking at my life, getting an idea of, well, and, and, and having that much time. I was 40 years old and um, I began to really take the time to look and see who am I and where am I going, what do I want and am I getting it. Um, and basically I got a spiritual wake-up call. I had an awakening and things began to happen and happened very quickly. So this is the intuitive thing that's happening all over the globe. People may be driving a cab or something in New York City or something and people seem to think that they're going uh, kind of, I don't know, I hate to use the word mad. Well, the, uh, on from a spiritual point of view, the, the vibration of the earth is being raised gently. As the vibration of the earth is being raised, all material, all that is matter or solid, that vibration is being raised also. By the vibration being raised, uh, we are receiving, in a sense, um, what many would call our spiritual gifts. Everyone is innately psychic. Everyone is, many, many, many people are already having dreams that are coming true. People are finding that many of them are us, are better teachers than we ever thought. By raising our own uh, vibration, we're, we're raising our, our own human potential and we're connecting with, in a sense, our soul, our higher self. And so we receive better information. We come to know uh, truly who we are in a different way. So, in a sense, little grandmothers are reaching for the telephone and they know it's, they reach for the phone and they go, I don't want to buy any fuller brushes today. And it turns out to be, sorry, fuller brush, but anyway, it turns out to be fuller brush man, for example. So, and then they're saying, wait a minute, what's going on here? Am I getting, you know, they feel uncomfortable yeah, they with feeling that. feeling uncomfortable yeah. with the amount of, of, uh, of uh, psychic ability, intuitive things, and the amount of coincidence that is happening in our lives, in your lives. Well, I'd like to, I'd like to lift this one. Sure. I'd like to show the folks at home the, the last aura picture here before we kind of got off a little bit on that one there. Yeah, that's okay. And th this one here is a... Uh, Herderite? This, this is Herderite. Um, Herderite is creating an environment for uh, much more uh, masculine energy. It's just a much rounder uh, energy. These little stones right here are called Herderite. And uh, they're from Brazil. They're very rare. Um, but also normal, regular, off the, uh, off the beaten path stones can do much also. The point is that the that the vibration of everything around us is being lifted. That includes my my shirt, my your tie, um, our shoes, our cars. Um, we we want uh, part of the the point of saying this is that for people to feel oh it's okay, you we are becoming more psychic as a people, as a, generally. This is everybody. It's not is about it, belief. Is this it? is happening with or without our consent. Is this uh, the collective vibration? Is this is it, it's almost being that this is the time. This is the time. This is the time that we have no no function on our own above it. It's we are alive at this point in time and, and at this point at the, of the world and in the universe. It is our time. It's our time. It's time for mankind for the for for the collective, as you say, the collective consciousness to be raised, and it is being raised. And so people are waking up everywhere and finding that uh, perhaps inanimate objects have energy and, and have consciousness. That doesn't mean that it's a very slow form of consciousness, perhaps compared to our own, because the, the rate of change is much slower than, than ours is. Now, with these, with these crystals, they've been used for centuries centuries literally C centuries um, Romans would use wands wrapped in silver for kidney problems there's also crystals called lithium mm -hmm. and then the, are these the same lithium that are ground into pharmaceuticals exactly and does the pharmaceutical have the same effect that holding a lithium a lithium wand would have uh, in general yes specifically I don't think that kind of scientific research has been done but but uh, 
lithium, for example, is a mood elevator. It's a antidepressant and um, and is a stabilizer for the emotional, you know, for our own emotions. Um, by simply holding uh, a, a stone that has lithium in it, we can also have the same same sign, same kinds uh, of feelings, that same kind of stability, simply by having the stone in our aura, having a rock in our pocket. And it doesn't make a difference if it's in your pocket or if it's in your hand? Or it's your hand. It could be bedside, um, um, some... Close to your aura? Close to, yes. I mean, what is the point of wearing jewelry, for example? The point of wearing jewelry traditionally is that stones are cut. Uh, they're for beauty and for vanity, and, and it's something that... an adornment, of course. Is the beauty meant to attract us? Oh, and so to, to pull to us attract, closer? To attract us one another, but also energetically. Uh, if, if I want to bring love into my life, then I want to be a person who is putting love out, because I'm going to attract that which is most like myself. If I have a problem with intimacy, or a problem with being, uh, being close with love, then there are stones that are, that are working with uh, our emotional self, or with our mental self, or with the physical body, or with the spiritual connection, that are much better at uh, calling that kind of uh, person to me. On a, on a human level, some of the, the things that, that happen to us, again, from the, a community level, uh, what, what are some of the main problems that really helps defeat the cause that that people innately are on? Is it, is it the lying? And how does the lying and, and well, you know, the kind of the, the lower types of human activity, how does that really undermine what's, what, what the universe seems to want for us? Well, the universe wants us to become who we really are. And that's, that's, what I, that's the information I received anyway. Is, and what, what is keeping us from that is that um, often we, we, we have a serious inability to have a good look at ourselves, to have a gentle look without judgment, and to ask, you know, who am I, who am I and where am I going? There are people, you know, millions of people all over the world, of course, that are doing that. And there is much search that's going on. It's a, what, who are we and what are we going to do here? What I, what, what I found was very interesting to find out that one of the products that has the lowest vibrations, aside from human beings, on the planet was tobacco. And I couldn't help but making the correlation between uh, the destruction that tobacco causes to the lowest vibrating. How does tobacco become the lowest vibrating plant? Well, uh, in Native American culture, it's a lower vibrational plant that is used to, through smoking the sacred pipe, or in different remedies to pull our negative from us because like attracts like and so it's used to so that we can okay. remove our, our lower vibrations. The uh, um, alcohol is also lower frequency than we are, for example. Um, so these are, these are used in, in all kinds of tribal settings uh, with, a correct, um, with, a, with a correct usage. For example, uh, uh, one of the um, ants will not cross a tobacco line, so you can put tobacco around uh, the front of your tent, and they, you don't have to worry them getting into your tent, for example. Well, David, we're we're just about out of out of time now. I want to thank you for coming and, and and sharing some of the crystals and some of your insight that you have, and um, for opening your heart and sharing your your knowledge with us here today. Uh, come back and share us again sometime soon. And if you would like more information, you can write or call or email us. Our, our address will be up shortly. And I'd like to thank our, our director today, Andrew Stewart, uh, and all of the new members of the OKTV OK staff uh, for ve being very quick learners today. I'm Al DiGiacomo. Thank you for watching Alternatives.